I, I think for so for so long, for many centuries, there's been um, a conspiracy to separate mind, body, and soul. And uh, uh, I'm thinking, of course, of the the experience of the church um, for many people of really um, separating out, you know, having any feelings, having any passion. Uh, from your experience of, of spirituality. So sexuality and spirituality got separated for, for many people centuries ago. And uh, uh, one of my favorite quotes is one by Thomas Edison, who said that the, the only good use of the body is as a vehicle to carry the head from place to place. So there's a, there's a prejudice about the body being the kind of lower form, and that if you're really spiritual, you can rise above or you transcend the body. And uh, I think that I mean, there's a tremendous amount of research about the the terrible cost of making that division in our wholeness. And our all of our careers, Gay and I, uh, our professional lives and our personal lives too, have really been a celebration of unity. That there really is no difference between your mind, your body, and your soul or spirit, that you are a whole person and express yourself in all of those mediums all the time. And what we've seen over and over again is that if uh, whether we start with um, the way that somebody might be um, cocking their head or a particular mannerism, it gives us an indication that there's some something going on. If we follow that, we often find that there's a feeling that the person uh, needs to express. And then when the person expresses that feeling, they open up into an inner space of um, wholeheartedness and an inner sense of uh, peacefulness or, or a kind of glowing expansion, which is themselves really claiming their spirit in their bodies. And so we're, we're real advocates of uh, people experiencing themselves fully here in the world as a body, mind, spirit, uh, and uh, that's what all of our work is about. We don't have any division, really. People say, you know, is your work spiritual? And yet, so we, it, you know, it would be <laughs> like saying, you know, is, is does the sun rise in the sky? Yes, there. Uh, there, it's all united, and to the extent that people feel themselves divided, it's simply a signal that there's something inside them that's needing to be given loving attention and probably needing to be communicated about. So all of our work in our, you know, 32 days about to publish its 32nd book, and we've written 10 together, and we have seminars we've taught all over the world and online courses. And they really are all about the, the way that each of us can reclaim our wholeness so that we can join together to co-create what really desperately needs to be co-created in our world. So rather than recycling the old problems, we want to really liberate people's energy to create the kind of uh, new structures and, and new ways of relating and new creativity that, that we really need to create a green economy. Yes, and I was also curious, Katie, do you find that in the United States specifically, and, and I'm sure this is true for the rest of the world, but so many people are just living in their bodies and then there's consequences and there are people that are just living in their minds like they into their intellectual assets <laughs> and all they do is think and read and do all those things and there are consequences for that so yes. how do you recommend that people take mind body and spirit and actually connect it like live from their heart and connect it to their minds? Mm. Well, the, the very first thing is asking that kind of a question. See, that what we found is that, uh, you know, asking a big question 
really helps to liberate that creative energy that each of us has inside. And the, the processes that we have found to be the most effective to unite people with their, with their body, mind, and, and soul are really body wisdom processes that everybody has access to. We teach people how to breathe in a way that allows them to experience that heartful contact with every breath. And we have processes you go to in our training, but we also have courses that people can take on our website uh, and books and uh, DVDs that we have created that assist people to learn those. We found that everybody that we've ever encountered, and that's been you know tens of thousands of people, can learn to breathe in a way that every breath becomes a source of joy and of integration. So that's one of the main things that we do. We do it in a very systematic way, but a way that's really fun. One of the things that I, I should say is that we've really found that people only learn when they're having a good time. Most people's experience of school or classes or seminars comes with some effort and some trying hard. And what we've really found in our in our students and clients have found is that as they're relaxed and having a good time, they learn much more quickly. Because if you're stressed, you're only going to repeat survival patterns. You're going to repeat the kinds of things that worked for you. So for example, if you're an intellectual type and you get stressed, and we've seen this a lot, people will get even more analytical, or they'll get more judgmental. They'll get more isolated and start trying to figure out why the, you know, why this isn't logical. I can uh, remember one uh, couple who came in where the, the woman was really upset and wanted him to know that she had feelings uh, that he wasn't listening to. And he persisted in saying that it's not logical to have feelings. If we could just simply eliminate feelings, people would be a lot better off. And that, that's one of the consequences of living in your head all the time. And so we use breathing. That's one of the one of the basic um, processes that goes through all of our work. And the other thing that we use continually are simple movement processes, where people can have the experience of, for example, uh, exploring how the nature of relationship. That relationship is a dance of getting closer and getting separate. And we have people actually experiment with that with an activity that allows them to really notice what happens when I get closer to another person, what happens when I move away. And uh, in that way, they get a very deep experience of how am I in the world, who am I, how do I want to be, and how can I move in that new direction. So when people get stuck, it's very often because they're not breathing and they're not moving. And that's one of the main focuses of our, of our Body, Mind, Vibrance training that is coming up uh, in the first part of February. It really teaches people not only to enjoy that themselves, but for those who are interested, to coach others so that they can have the most enjoyable experience of being a body. Fantastic. <laughs> I love it because I love to laugh. So we have posted. Oh, we, do, we do too. I don't trust. I don't trust anybody who can't laugh and doesn't have a sense of humor. <laughs> there, <laughs> there you go. We have posted uh, the Hendrix.com website several times in our chat room. So maybe we can uh, switch over to the EliminationUniversity.com site, which I found to be awesome. It's it's a yes, it it's a membership awesome. site, yeah. And and you guys are covering all the major things like relationships, manifestation, weight loss, and the list just goes on. And we can talk about that in more detail. Uh, but I believe we have a caller on the line, so let's uh, find out about the caller. Welcome uh, to the show. Just tell us your first name, please, and where.